Hey, what's going on? Big Grime. Got Cakewalk Sonar 7 Producer Edition. And I had someone who wanted to know how do you set up a metronome in Sonar. So I'm going to do this quick video. Basically, you want to go to Options. When you go to Options, you go to Project. As you see, there's tabs. Um, you want to go to Metronome. And you got Playback, Record. You have measures and beats. You have record counting. Then you have audio and MIDI. Basically, um, and then down here, you can pick the sound that you want and the output of that sound. <clears throat> Let's go further into this. Now, playback, of course, means that if you just hit play, anytime that you're listening, or even if there is no beat, if you have, let's say how I have right here, you can see I have a loop um, measure. As long as there's a loop measure or a sound, you hit play, it will play, and you can hear the, the metronome, which is a good thing when you're trying to set your tempo, um, which I've done another video how you can do tap tempo, tempo and Sonar 7 using your computer keyboard. Just search, you know, Kickwalk Sonar tap tempo. And you should see my video on there, um, which that would be an easy way of setting tempo. But um, before you had tap tempo, what I used to do is play the metronome and just kind of went up and down on the tempo however I wanted it. So, um, so that's one way you could do that by doing a playback. Recording, of course, is why you're recording the metronome is going off. And to turn those things off and on is by unchecking and checking. So if I don't want it to play, because, you know, sometimes, like, I might start off, you know, recording with the metronome or playing back with the metronome just to hear how, you know, make sure the sound's on time. Um, but then after a few sounds or a few loops, I want to turn the playback off. So I go back to options and turn the playback off. And that's doing done by unchecking the play off. Um and leaving recording check because you want to hit a metronome while you're recording. Um, record count in is basically it's going to count in four, um, four taps. For every one count in, it's going to be four taps before it actually starts recording. So this gives you a chance to be prepared. So there you go tick, 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 start recording. Um, of course, if you do it two, if I push it up to two, then it's going to do it eight times, you know, before it'll start. Or on the eighth time, it'll start recording. So, I typically use it on, on one just to give myself a little time to start recording. Um, and that can be measured by measures or beats. I just leave it on measures as simple. I never really use beats. Um, yeah, audio metronome meaning that the tick will be coming from sonar you didn't always have that option i think they started that i want to say in sonar four or five before back in the day you had to use your synthesizer or your um if you had a drum machine you had to use that you know vst to hear a tick because it would only send out a midi note or if you had a hardware it was you can have it sent to that hardware to do the tick it didn't have the sound inside of sonar they were kind of late on that. But I'm glad they have it now. So you choose audio. It has the sounds within side sonar. You can choose your sound right here. They have stick, um, tambourine. They even got kick, hi-hats. There's, you know, right many different bongos that you can choose. Um, which you have the first beat because the first tick is different from the rest of the ticks. You know, so... That way, it'll let you know when it's actually recording. It'll be a different tick when it starts to record. So, or for each measure, it'll be a different tick. So you have one for your first tick, and then for the other ticks, you have, you can choose a different sound. Then you can choose the output of the sound. If you have a sound card that have multiple outs, you can choose the output of where you want that tick to come out. Um, 
then you have MIDI. So if you click on MIDI, it actually lets you select the channel because if you have a multi tamal instrument, let's say I have you know the Corgan 3, I can choose which sound or which uh, MIDI channel I want that tick to trigger. Typically, it's going to be 10. That's like the universal default channel for drums. I use channel 1 for drums, but in most synthesizers or software that you use, in general, it's going to be channel 10. So automatically, it's going to be on channel 10, but you can change it to whatever you want. Then, of course, um, the port, which most of us only have one port. Like, I can't adjust it because I only have one port, MIDI port. And then duration of it, you can change that too. You can change the key, you can change the velocity. So changing the key will like almost like changing the sound. So if I have drums, and let's say I have a kick on, let's say it has um, um, the key of F, I can say, well, I don't want my kick to be the note, the, the sound. I can go up the key and let's say, uh, a let's say a is a snail a is the hi-hat and i can change the sound that way and i can also change the velocity of the tick so you have a lot you have very much control over just a simple metronome um in general i think i pretty much covered everything um oh yeah one more thing too you can also change the volume of if when you have it on uh, on audio which is the sound coming from sonar you can change the volume how loud it is all right, so that's how you turn on your metronome, and don't forget to click OK when you finish the settings. Um, so make sure you check me out, myspace.com backslash biggrime1. You don't have to spell out one, just type the number one. And um, I got beats, I got other, you know, videos, and that's just the way you can contact me on MySpace. And um, hope you enjoyed the video. Have any questions, hit me up.